morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number four hundred and thirty-five of the Daily Beaver. Is it thirty-five? Yeah, of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yay! Today, recording day is Monday, July 29th, 2024, and it is going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the eager Weaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Weaver, eh? and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Ah, Mr. Grizzly, we got a short one today, so how's your mental health today? Mental health is surprisingly good, actually. I think the three weeks off did me a world of good. Uh, you know, I had some moments here and there, as, as one normally does. But yeah, well rested. And uh, of course, I did, I checked my schedule when I woke up. I'm like, oh, I have an early start this morning. <laughs> and as I had somebody, Bridget was like, are you going to check your schedule for tomorrow? I'm like, no, I'm still on vacation. Until tomorrow morning, I'm on vacation. I'm not doing any work until tomorrow so this morning i just oh yeah okay there we go so short short one this morning unfortunately but it's duty calls right all right uh and unfortunately kids and cubs i um my alarm didn't go off so uh i woke up two minutes before the show was supposed to start so uh, thank you for your patience <laughs> um not quite sure what we can do today so uh i guess we're maybe just gonna talk olympics i guess yeah, other than talk olympics. Things. uh just How do you one feel thing about the, 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 the FIFA ruling. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, okay, not how I was going to open. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, no, no, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> uh, uh, the the FIFA ruling. The FIFA ruling. Uh, so Canada. yes, um, yeah. yeah. So uh, what happened uh, over the course of the weekend is that uh, FIFA uh, administered in an interesting way uh, because normally the, the ruling is supposed to be administered in one way, but they did it in a whole other way. I guess that made it such that it could be appealed during the games mm -hmm. and that a decision might be made during the games. Uh, yeah, but uh, sanctions were imposed uh, upon Team Canada because uh, when we last left off, uh, we found out that the drone thing wasn't just the two incidents uh, at uh, the Olympics, but it seems to have been a thing for some, uh, with, uh, for some time with Canada soccer. Uh, and um, former coach John Herdman uh, made a comment at one point about, you know, all team scout. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is, uh, which disappointed me from him um, because, I mean, you know, we owe him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, scouting is um, done in the open. Mm -hmm. Like you openly go to a practice through the front door, mm -hmm. and you are there, and usually you're invited, and you're not asked to leave. Uh, you go watch the match, mm -hmm. like in tennis. You know, while the athlete is like maybe getting their physio, the coach go goes and watches the match of the next player that mm -hmm. they might be playing if they win, and they take notes, but. It does not involve breaking the law. 
because in France, flying drones is against the law. Mm-hmm. The video anal- analyst that got kicked out uh, got an eight-month suspended sentence. He pleaded no contest, whatnot, and you know said, "We don't need a trial. I'm just going to." So, but he got an eight-month suspended sentence. So they broke the law. That's yeah. one thing right off the bat. Forget the cheating or not cheating. People broke the law. Mm-hmm. That enough is already embarrassing. You go to another country and you break the law. But then there's the cheating aspect. So um, FIFA came down with a uh, sanction uh, that was um, Team Canada was to be um, docked six points. So when I thought that, I thought they meant, when they were asking that, I thought they meant ranking points. Like if Canada beat New Zealand, they would get some ranking points in the rankings and that. So no. And then I thought, okay, they won't get points. Okay, well, no points for the match against New Zealand. But no, they came up and uh, they docked Team Canada uh, six points. Now, uh, for those who are not familiar, in soccer, if you get a win, you get three points. And before you get to the playoffs, the bracket, uh, you're doing pool play and you get three matches. So the Mm. maximum number of points you can get are nine. And and, and they started with minus six. Same record. Well, not everybody can have the same record, but uh, if if you have a tie. Goal differential. uh, Goal differential plays a part in that. Uh, It plays a part, right. So basically, they created a situation such that Team Canada had to win all three matches. To have, to have a chance, right? And one of the teams in the pool was the world number two, mm-hmm. which means they kind of arranged it so that Team Canada did not have to go home, mm-hmm. but really, probably, statistically, couldn't advance because who's going to expect Team Canada to beat France? Uh, they did. They did, <laughs> but who's going to expect it, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, to me, um, and then there was other things. They sent Coach Bev Priestman home she's from the tournament for completely. Year, she's banned for a full year. Yeah. Uh, and then they were fined, uh, the Soccer Canada Soccer was fined 200,000 Swiss francs, which I'm not sure what that uh, translates into Canadian dollars. I'd have to take a look at it. Oh, 350. Uh, uh, Swiss franc is valued a higher valuation than the U.S. dollar right now. Yeah, it has oh, been absolutely. For some time. So it's a, it's a lot of money. Now, it, here's the thing that, that, that I... You know, I talked to a few people about this yesterday and didn't, prof- okay. pardon? you asked me what I thought about it and I haven't said what I thought about it, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, I thought you were getting into that. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I think honestly, what FIFA should have done was send the team home. Mm-hmm. Honestly, just sorry, they're canceled, go home. Uh, I think what they did was, I mean, look, they cheated whether it was the players who were in on it or not is, is not up for debate. I think, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me here on this, but it's like, no, the team, you win as a team, you lose as a team, you cheat as a team, even if you had no hand in it. Everybody gets painted with the same brush when it comes to sports, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I honestly think they should have just sent the team home. Mm. That's my opinion. Yeah. So for me, uh, my... Uh, take on it is when that thing, that thing happens, you make a decision. Mm -hmm. So you either send the team home or you don't send the team home and you explain why and you impose a sanction. So they opted to do the other thing. Now, the problem is, is that if you're going to impose a sanction, it's got to be a consistent sanction. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that We've also we also heard that um, the drone stuff is not exclusive to Team Canada. Right. There have been complaints from other teams, and pre-drone, back in the day, people were frequently caught Filming. on rooftops yeah. with video cameras. From it. Never, ever, ever has a team been sanctioned six points. No. So, what I think happened here, I think they should have had, they should have done what the team New Zealand requested, that they don't get the three points, let's say, or they don't get the ranking points, and leave it at that because New Zealand wasn't asking for more. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or they send them home. But what they decided to do was make an example of Canada. And this is something that happens again and again and again to Canada at the Olympics. Yeah. Ben Johnson, he was the only one doping. He was far from the only one doping. But he was the only one who got caught. But, and he and got because, caught using a drug. Got caught on a drug he wasn't even using. Yes. Stenazolol. Yes. He wasn't yes. even using that one. So. Yes. 
So, um, but it was 100 meters. It was the marquee event. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't Russia because uh, Sochi. Mm -hmm. um, what did they do? Oh, Russia, you can't march in under your flag. Do you think Putin cares about that? When somebody wins a gold medal, he just does whatever he does on state's TV. And he's, you know, glorified. the athletes were still allowed. China, before this Olympics, I think there were 23 athletes mm -hmm. that were caught. The whole China swim team is there. Yeah. I guess. But Ben Johnson, I guess, oh, he gets booted. He gets made an example of. And here again, Ross Ribliati. Yeah. Yes, gets made an example of. Eventually, he they did, did get leave him and yeah. really keep his medal because it wasn't on the marijuana was on the list, but they should put it on the list afterwards now, did they? Mm -hmm. Yes. And now this. So, um, well, and, and this, this, this is so, the one. This oh is boy. The one. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. My buddy was telling me about that yesterday. I'm like, uh, wait a minute. For people what? listening at home, uh, Kit Carroll uh, put in the chat there, there's a convicted rapist competing. He raped a 12 year old. I, I don't know in what, uh, what sport or anything like that. I but would, yeah, I did learn about that just yesterday. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So, um, to me, what I think happened is one is that they tried to make an example of Canada, number one, but number two, uh, FIFA took the cowardly way out because there was a match between Canada and host nation France. Mm -hmm. Now, if FIFA had sent Canada home, FIFA would have a problem in right. that how many goals do they award for matches that are not played? And know since New works. Zealand played a match, so they created a situation. So if New Zealand go, hey, wait a minute, and then somebody else wait a minute, and then somebody else wait a minute, I guess, and then they created a situation where uh, everybody in France would not get an opportunity to see France play at home. Yeah. And then there were the ratings that come with uh, the number two team in the world versus the number eight team in the world. So not wanting to uh, lose the ratings, not wanting to lose the ticket sales, not wanting to deprive the people of France of a match at home, and not wanting to have to deal with the complication of what happens if everybody finishes with three points, or goal differential as attributed by FIFA ends up being the deciding factor between who advances or doesn't, because mm -hmm. that would be a mess. FIFA took the cowardly out. You know what? We're, we're going to just, we're going to force you to stay there and compete, but give you no real chance of winning because, hey, you're not going to beat France. Then they beat France. So it was the cowardly way out. Now they beat France. Yeah. And if Canada beats Colombia, they do advance. I know. Because it's crazy. on head to head, Canada will have defeated France and yes. Colombia. Yeah. And they have four goals in the tournament thus far. Yes. So. And all of them will have. Three points, I guess, except for maybe Colombia, who, no, Canada plays Colombia. So yes. So France will advance because they're playing New Zealand next unless New Zealand upsets them. Yes, but between Colombia and Canada, mm -hmm. yes, Canada beats Colombia head to head, they win. It, it, it's, it, that's not a sure thing, but it's a very likely scenario. All right. Uh, I have a feeling that the way that they did this um when uh the world cup is in canada in 2026 i would not like to be a fifa official in canada being introduced at a match yeah they're going to get an extremely rough ride yeah they are for this uh so yeah the punishment uh should have been one or the other mm -hmm. uh but this middle thing that makes it convenient for FIFA, that solves all the problems for FIFA, and then essentially says, oh, you can still play, but, uh, and set people up. Now it seems, of course, that um, rather than discourage our team, this provided motivation and fuel. Uh, yeah, so the first game against New Zealand, New Zealand's called first, and that was sort of like, well, you know, that's kind of a little karma, guys. <laughs> uh, but the, the team did uh, rally back to win 2-1. And then uh, yesterday, same thing, France scored first uh, just uh, in stoppage time in uh, the first half, and then Canada scored two great goals uh, in the end uh, to upset uh, the world number two and uh, create the situation that probably has everybody at FIFA going, oh, shit, <laughs> we screwed now, um, because they know. Now, the other thing, so uh, congratulations to the girls, because even though I agree with you, you compete as a team, you win or lose, I'm not convinced uh, that the players knew, and you have everyone, you have Christine Labbe that turned around, uh, don't mistake good goaling for cheating, and Christine Sinclair says, I've been with the team 23 years, I had never seen Joan Footage 
practice. Right. And the players don't have to see drone footage. Like I said, and when Brief, Bev Priestman said she didn't know, it could also have been very much that, you know, hey, video analyst gets a little ambitious, right? Just takes the thing and then makes all these wonderful suggestions and say, oh my God, this is wonderful. You're really great. Yes, with nobody knowing how it is they got that information. But it turns out the assistant coach did know how they got the information, and through the investigations, they kind of concluded that they didn't say that Rev Priestman knew, and they certainly didn't say she proved, but they said, we kind of find it hard to believe that there's no way she was not aware. So that's the conclusion that they came to. Uh, the other thing that happened, though, and this one makes me mad, is that the government of Canada... Yeah, they're holding, withhold some of Canada Soccer's funding in response to the scandal. Yeah. So Bev Priestman, Joseph Lombardi, and Jasmine Mander, each official suspended from taking part in any football-related activity for a period of a year. Soccer Canada, uh, the government of Canada said it was withholding funding. And at first, there were some newspaper articles that said just withholding funding, which caused everybody to go, what? Until it was sort of specified, no, like funding related to the coaches. And that type of stuff. Uh, but once again, that part, that part was a decision that the government of Canada did not need to make right now. That could have waited until the end of the tournament. Right. Well, as it turns out, Canada's men's team has also found itself in the crosshairs. Canada's soccer oh, yes, CEO absolutely. says that the men's team has used similar tactics for years. Yes. Including attempts to use drones for spying during its historic run of the Copa America this past summer. So Yes. Yep. Phew. Yep. So this is like, there's, this is ingrained somewhere in the coaching. Like this. So again, the place is rotten, had a clean yeah. house, and I don't know what the f it is with Soccer Canada. They couldn't do the branding right going into the Men's World Cup. They couldn't do the contract before the women went. To and now the I do not know what it is with all these official entities doing stuff that interferes with the capacity of the players to actually play their best match. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. There was no urgency for the government of Canada. No to make that announcement now. FIFA had to make the announcement now because the tournament's going on now and they have to come up with something. But the government of Canada didn't have to throw on to the pile during the tournament. That could have waited. So lots of stupid decisions all around. Um, yeah. I Now, and Craig Forrest agrees with you. By the way, former goaltender for the Canadian National Men's oh, yeah. Team. I guess that they should have been sent home. Um, Part of me thought that even the players, after that decision, because FIFA took the cowardly way out, it's like, take a decision. You can stay or you can go, because, but don't create this mathematical thing. Yeah, it's, right? it, and I think it's blown up in their face now, right? Yeah. <laughs> in FIFA's face. Part of me was thinking, what if the players decided just not to take the pitch? Well, there was, uh, that was a, I was wondering if that was going to happen, but that... that but here's the thing. It, but they've it trained like, for four years. It looks like there sportsmanship too, right? Right. By not taking the field. So, right. Right. Exactly. you know, do, do you insult your opponent by doing that is the question, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do you fix this? Yeah. So the players just go out and play the game and leave all the management up to the management people and yeah. let the chips fall where they may, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but the best part about this was the um, uh, Vanessa, G I'm not sure if she goes by Gilles or Gilles, because mm. I'm a French friend, Francophone, um, who scored uh, the winning goal yesterday. Uh, and uh, kudos to Jesse Fleming, who scored a goal, and a captain who scored a goal in each of the games. Mm. Uh, and uh, Evelyn Vieille as well uh, in the first game. And I can't remember, Chloe Lacasse scored mm. as well. Um, oh, no, she didn't score in the first game, Jesse Fleming. She got the assist on, right. the, on the Vieille goal. Um, uh, the quote that she had after is, you know, it's like we've been crying, we haven't been eaten, we haven't. So um, the women on the pitch are playing for each other and they're playing for the love of the sport at the moment. That's it. That's and they're playing cool. to prove a point. Yeah. Because there was no accusations of cheating on France. So without the video analyst, without an assistant coach, without the main coach, with all this pressure going on, they went to the pitch, the pitch and they beat France. Mm -hmm. Clean. Yeah. They are good. Yeah, they're a good team. That's that's never been up for debate, I don't think. Right. So that's why they had to cheat, I don't I don't get. Why the coach coaches. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no evidence and not yet the, not even from FIFA, not even from Olympic no, no, Committee, I know that the Olympic. Nobody's were. saying that the players No, no, I, I know. Maybe something know. will come up later, who knows? I don't know. But nobody at this point is saying this. And they're not even saying that Priestman knew, they just said, <clears> you know, 
we find it hard to believe that this was going on for this long throughout all over the program and the coach did not know. Because well, it was all over the program. Men, every, women, everybody for years. Was, yeah, management was in on it. It was right through the system. So, uh, you know, something is rotten in the state of Denmark, quite frankly. Yeah. I think it's time to clean house at Soccer Canada. Yeah. And, and we've kind of been saying that for a little while now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Soccer Canada is a mess. Yeah. And, you know, their head office is like 150 meters from my front door. Yep. Yeah. Canada soccer is a mess. Um, we've got to go soon. So, um, very quickly, uh, Canada, it appears, has three medals. There appears to, that there was one this morning, and I haven't seen yet. Um, but in the pool, <clears throat> your Queen Beaver officially declares the Summer Games open. Uh, in a 400 meter race for the ages, uh, there were three people that held the world record at any given time, yeah. uh, in there, uh, I think within the last year, actually, mm -hmm. even, uh, when in the race and, uh, unlike the world championships were in the first 400 meters, the first race, Summer McIntosh finished fourth and everybody goes, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. Like this, you know, she did great afterwards. Uh, she finished second. So she got the silver medal. Uh, she and uh, Ariana Titmus, I believe, from Australia, are the only two that broke four minutes in the race. Uh, so that was really interesting. Uh, and then yesterday, uh, well, on the first day, a little bit of history was made uh, in fencing because there's a Canadian man who defeated the defending Olympic champion somewhere along the way and ended up with a top eight finish, which was the best result for the Canadian fencing team at the Olympics until yesterday. When uh, the Canadian women's team in the foil in the first round, all three of them won, which was kind of interesting. Ooh, something's going on here. And uh, a lady named Eleanor um, Harvey from the Hamilton area uh, got all the way to the medal round and defeated the number four fencer in the world for the bronze medal to cool. be the first Canadian ever. ever to win a medal in fencing. That's pretty cool. So like when you say you get the surprise, uh, surprise medals and somebody does, so somebody on the men's team did something that was historic, inspires the whole team, boom, you get a medal. And then apparently this morning, I believe it is in diving that uh, I think 10 meter men's synchronized platform. Uh, there was a medal for Canada there, a bronze, and I'm just looking it up quickly to see it is Canadians Ryan Weens and Nathan Zum Zumbor Murray. Uh, who won the bronze in uh, 10 meter synchro. So uh, we have a silver and two bronze. Uh, we also have a fourth place. The men's four by, uh, the women's four by 100 meter relay finished fourth. The men's finished sixth. Maggie McNeil finished fifth. Uh, Mary Sophie Harvey is in the final of the 200 meter freestyle. I think it probably goes today. Uh, the 400 IM with Summer McIntosh also goes today. So mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, the Canadian Rugby Sevens women's team uh, actually won their first match against Fiji, who are the defending bronze Olympic medalists. So it's looking good that they might advance to the next round. And I think that uh, finishes uh, to today. So there might be a medal in Rugby Sevens for Canada today. Uh, what else? Uh, anyway, there, there, there is lots of stuff. And we, we Unfortunately, we have to go. So uh, I can't uh, deliver it all to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what happened at the Olympics. There is more political news. But we'll have more for you tomorrow, Kenny. Uh, Kiss and Cups, because we'll be able to stay longer. But I have one headline to share quickly. Okay. Very, very quickly, because right. this is this is disturbing. Alberta's seasonal firefighters at half of 2023 levels. The workers who do remain are making 22 to 33 percent less than their counterparts elsewhere in Canada. Yes, and uh, there's the thing. Uh, you've got uh, these conservative candidates, and one of them in particular, who's a, a wannabe candidate in a writing somewhere who goes by the name of Tracy Ferran, is uh, basically saying, uh, and, and if you go to her, do not engage with her. She is unstable. Yeah, I, I told her as much Holy yesterday. unstable and gross. Yeah, I told her. I said, Super lady, gross. you do not have the intestinal fortitude to be in politics. You are behaving like the narcissist leader of the opposition. You don't have the stomach for this or the temperament. You really should step away from this. Mm -hmm. And she's literally accusing Stephen Gilbo of having basically, you know, been responsible for burning down the whole village and started. She's she, out of her mind. Completely out of her mind. Very unstable. She actually told a friend of mine, I guess, who had uh, helped her husband in palliative care. Mm -hmm. I guess, I told her the story and after that. So, do you think that makes you better than me? 
Thanks, lady. She, this lady needs therapy. Yeah. She does not to be seek, lead, need to be seeking political office. She needs therapy. They need to uh, take the Twitter machine away from her and put her into uh, psycho, psycho, psycho but, analysis. But these are the types of candidates yeah. that Pierre Polyev is attracting. Yeah. Pay Beyond attention. Hinged. Eyes wide open. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, Daniel Smith and Barrister. Oh, by the way, Daniel Smith flip flopped on the uh, on the payments. By the way, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Really damn quick. From and then apparently to, we'll get them right away. Yeah, and then posted a, a Twitter a picture on Twitter uh, of a mountain area saying Jasper Strong. It was a picture of Banff. Banff. Yeah. So that's how you know the tears weren't real. For she cared so much about the people of Banff. She put up even, a, of Jasper that she put up a photo of Banff, which led to a whole bunch of people putting a whole bunch of Jasper Strong photos like Mount Fuji yeah, and a volcano yeah. erupting and a lighthouse. Banff is about 280 kilometers south of Jasper. It's just, just, yeah. And basically, basically the argument out there is, that, well, it's a national park, so that means the federal government failed. It's not how it works. It's called shared responsibility. And the town of Jasper? Is a municipality which is a provincial matter yeah i guess and basically uh daniel smith just said you know jasper well it's, it's not a, it's not a responsibility because federal so she basically did the same thing that trump did she basically just took a sharpie and said oh yeah uh because this happened well the borders are not what the borders are i gotta go dude yeah all right kids and gubs we're not going to do the full outro so mr grizzly can go but you can scan the qr code uh, coffee ko hyphen fi.com slash eager beaver if you would like to help us and our youtube page like share and subscribe because democracy is something that you do make sure that uh, you wear some red and white and cheer for team canada today that's your job all right mr grizzly some words of wisdom please hydrate it's going to be a hot one out there in canada today so take care of yourself we'll see you all soon. right it could be a tough world out there. Please be kind to attend with yourself. Please cue the cock. Cue the cock, Mr. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. <laughs>